do you understand or do you, do you, what other options they have? Let's talk about the alternatives for American intelligence as well as CIA involved in all those activities. Well, when you say options, Saeed, there's only one option for me. Illegal wars need to be stopped. Mm. How do they need to be stopped? The international community has to intercede and force them to stop. Forget the UN, forget the Security Council. America has a veto. It'll veto anything contrary to its interests, anything contrary to Israeli interests. Forget about it. The rest of the world, the free world, the international world, the Western world needs to get out from under U.S. policy, needs to say, we will not tolerate this anymore. We won't support it. We will go public on it. Pressure alone can end America's imperial wars. But, but don't, you think, don't you think it's a very wishful thinking? I mean, uh, on a human grounds, I understand there is a point. But from CIA perspective or from any American intel, I don't think this is going to happen. So do we have other alternatives while uh, targeting those uh, so-called terrorists in those territories? But how, how is it possible? Can we go through out of district attorney or any federal judges? They can be involved? Well, let me put it to you this way, Saeed. There have been a number of times in American history when the impossible became the possible. Mm -hmm. I've written about them. I've talked about them. I had an interview this morning, and I talked about them there. The, most, the biggest impossible achievement in America was ending slavery. It went on for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. It went on before America became America, when there were colonists for centuries, and America had not yet become America. And how did it happen? Because a small group of committed people decided they would accept nothing less. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Small groups mm -hmm. committed for change can force governments to do what they never would have done if commitment wasn't sustained until achievement happened. It happened with ending slavery. It ended with, with, with civil rights. It ended with labor rights. It can happen with ending aggressive wars. If enough people get behind it, they mm -hmm. can force their governments. There have been other things that have happened in America because people got behind issues, politicians, even in dictatorships. But it doesn't matter. In democracies, Adolf Hitler knew this. Mm -hmm. Hermann mm -hmm. Goering understood this. He was interviewed at Nuremberg when he went on trial before he committed suicide. And he explained to a prison psychologist why, who asked him, how did the Germans ever go along with Nazi policies? And he said something to the effect that you can't expect farmers in their fields mm -hmm. to want to go to war for any reason at all. You have to convince them there's a, there's a reason. You have to create a threat. You have to make them believe that their futures, their families could be harmed. You have to make them believe that they need to support something because they'll harm themselves otherwise. So even dictatorships, i.e., understand that they cannot force their policies on people who won't accept them. They have to convince them. They have to propagandize them. Mm -hmm. Propaganda cuts both ways. But when it's truth-telling, it's not propaganda. It's spreading important information that people need to know. If they know government policies harm them, if they understand that their families are threatened, that's the best way to get things changed. Okay. It's happened in America. It's happened in many countries around the world. But, but uh, let me get uh, Asim here. Asim, Code Pink has traveled to Pakistan. There were 50, 50, more than 50 activists who traveled to Pakistan and uh, participated in the Waziristan March, which happened last year. But what were the end results? I mean, we're talking about awareness here, but where do you see it all going? I think one of the, the first things that actually the Waziristan Peace March actually achieved, that it was the first time that anybody from Pakistan had actually gone in there. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no politician ever visited uh, that belt. So the first point was basically to address is to, to bring that sense of cohesion and the togetherness that actually we do understand 
that there is an issue. And we do actually feel that this is issue is not just necessarily tied in with FATA. It, it ties in with the whole concept of Pakistan, basically. So the first thing is this, to reassure them that uh, we, we in Pakistan and the political party, we are trying, and we have done already, I mean, there was, before it, we went to Waziristan, there were a lot of protests, there were a lot of sit-ins leading up to that as well, to highlight one thing very clearly, that Pakistan, we cannot have this war of aggression and in that form. And as Stephen was saying earlier on, the way to build pressure is not just necessarily the drone attacks, it's the whole concept of U.S. foreign policy has to be examined. We cannot have this policy of aggression and it's, it's, it's the militancy where you literally remove all the threads of democracy and all the threads of dialogues. You, you, put people, you do not put people on trial. You do not hear their side of the story as well. And you just actually basically keep killing them. It's not just the Pakistan. It's the same thing is happening in Afghanistan. The same thing happened in Afghanistan, Korea, Vietnam. And there's a whole list of disasters, basically going on from the 19th century onwards. So I think it's important that the, 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 the free world, the West, and also obviously the regions in the East as well, I think it's not just the awareness, but people really have to realize the fact as well that whatever these things are happening, it would impact them as well. It would impact not just Pakistan, it would impact the whole region, and then it can flood off to other regions as well. So, and it's just, so we in Waziristan March were basically, the idea was very simple that we need to reassure them that we're doing all we can and we understand the implications. At the same time, Code Pink and all the other organizations that went there, basically it was for them to see as well so they can build the case in the international mm -hmm. uh, uh, environment that this thing is, which is happening is just completely immoral. Which, I mean, which in no doubt they have done that. Obviously, they have been leading protests all across the world. But, you know, I mean, that was last year. This year, your party is in government in that region. I mean, I, I understand yeah. that yeah. your point of view might come across like that uh, FATA, the Federal Administrative Territory Area, is not part of KPK government. But still, I mean, what on ground you uh, or your party has been doing? Since you have been elected? Uh, basically, since we have come into the government in KPK, I mean, one of the biggest issues is obviously uh, is, is peace and order. I mean, it's law and security enforcement and all the other things. And it's we have numeracy, basically. Again, it's, I mean, it's not just the KPK, it's not just KPK government's issue. It's the issue of the whole country as Pakistan. Mm -hmm. It's the federal issue as well. It's the provincial issue as well. Until and unless, and Imran Khan has repeatedly actually urged the Prime Minister of Pakistan and also the, the Chief of Staff, uh, Pervez, uh, General Pervez as well, uh, Ashwak Yani, that they need to have a meeting so where they can actually sit together and see that what actually has been agreed, what is going on, for them to actually come up with a policy. There has been numerous resolutions that have been passed in the last previous government as well, and even now as well. But the government seems to have turned a blind eye, basically. So basically, what you're saying is that if Imran Khan is unable to meet the army chief in private, then there will be no policy. Well, the policy, the policy is basically, I mean, the, it's, it's the resolution that have been passed numerously in the parliament, the last government as well. And before that as well, and even now, everybody, it's very simple said, you have to see that as, that it is it's a war, mm -hmm. uh, the drone attacks have to end. And for that to happen, basically, Americans have to leave their area. They have to vacate Afghanistan, they have to uh, go through that, basically, the, poly, the process of exit. But they, they that, have recently announced as well that they will not be leaving, as it was uh, quoted in print, uh, in print media, as well as electronic media. They will not be leaving in Afghanistan in 2014. There will be some still some forces well, who will be training. I, so I, I don't think I, that I, is going to happen. Well, the thing is this, uh, by two, 2014, I'm sure they will still leave, love to sort of leave a lot of sort of soldiers and all the infrastructure they have put in place over there. But the end result is always going to be saying that they, if they want a peaceful area, if they want a total peace and stability in that region where you have Afghanistan, India as well, Pakistan and China, Americans have to realize this for once, 
once in their lifetime that they really have to, they cannot utilize these means of aggression. Mm -hmm. If they remain there, you can carry on with these debates for another five to 10 years time. They, in fact, the, the actual composition of this will even go even more bigger as well, because currently it's just one area. We, we know that the, the, the monitoring, the surveillance, is all around Pakistan as well. They have air bases as well, and the Pakistani government seems to have turned a blind eye. Mm. And we are making our utmost best, basically, that we need to stop this. In fact, this is one of the things that we had said that if PTI was to come in government, in, in federal as well, then the first thing would have been to be very open and very sort of straightforward that, guys, this has to stop. I mean, if you cannot have a dialogue, then this is not the means to actually go into Pakistan and into its tribal areas. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's one of those things, say, that, yes, the international pressure should be built as well, as people like Steven and all the other organizations are playing the, the is a playing important role. At the same time, the consensus in Pakistan, the people are fed up, basically. Every day we lose lives as a direct impact of these drone attacks and strikes. Every day we have lost more than 40,000 people as a reaction to all this war that has happened in Pakistan, basically. Uh, every day there's the suicide attacks, there is basically the drone attacks. There are people, organizations that have sprung up, basically, they're criminal organizations, and most of them are being supported by the people like... But, you know, I mean, I, I would beg to defer with this argument of yours that it's a more sort of reactionary uh, approach. I mean, what Shias of Pakistan have to do with this uh, suicide bombing, which has been in place in Quetta, Karachi, and you name the part of the Pakistan, and it's there. So, I mean, Punjabi Taliban wasn't created by America, is it, right? I, I think you, uh, it's basically, a number of times it has been stated as well, that uh, sometimes it appears that the, the Americans are playing both sides, they have, with the government of Pakistan as well, mm -hmm. and also they are actually basically keeping the Taliban. The TTP, the composition of TTP, uh, it appears to be totally different than the actual Taliban in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many criminal groups that have sprung up that somebody, someone is using the name of the Punjabi Taliban and the things that are happening in, in, in Quetta as well, the way the Shia has been butchered to death. So everything, I mean, you, the, the, old, the current defense secretary of USA is basically, uh, Chuck Segal has been saying that the India has been involved. India is playing mm -hmm. the, uh, through Afghanistan everything that has happened i mean and everything is interlinked if you look at the recent scenarios i mean right from the the current sort of confessions of one of the secretaries in india that the the, the mumbai attacks and the, the attacks before pakistan had nothing to do with it mm -hmm. uh, so it's everything is interlinked and to make it more reactive to make it more volatile they actually want to have a shia sunni sort of um, um, uh, clash as well Mm -hmm. they, they, they have the, the tribal belt covered off as well by basically the drones attack. So, and, and the situation in Karachi, you cannot ignore the situation in Karachi, is exactly the same patterns. Different means have been actually utilized, but in the end is to destabilize Pakistan. Mm -hmm. and, and through that destability, basically then just, okay, now we can walk over. And then India would have on the other side is waiting as well. I mean, look at India and, and the aggression they're showing, the media and the, the, the narrative they're building up, basically. So I think we in Pakistan have to be, we are very careful and we're monitoring that as well, that these, these scenarios that are building up, uh, we just simply cannot take them lightly. Yeah. Okay, okay, Asim, uh, we just got to go for a break. And before I go to break, okay. I want to pose a question to Stephen. Uh, we are talking about the complicit governments. So I'll talk to you when I come back uh, after the break that uh, the governments in Yemen, Somalia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, what exactly they are doing from American, uh, as an American journalist point of view, what is your take on that? So uh, join us viewers after the break and we'll talk to Stephen Lenman from Chicago and Asim Khan from London. Welcome back viewers. Uh, we are joined by Stephen Lenman uh, from Chicago and Asim Khan uh, from London and we are talking about drones. Uh, most people know very little about drones and we want everyone to begin to see the depth of uh, the threat that drone presents to all. And before we went to break, I posed a question to Stephen Lenman regarding the complicity of the governments based in Yemen, Somalia, as well as in Pakistan. So let's take his point of view. Uh, Stephen, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear Please. you. Well, absolutely. Governments throughout the Middle East, North Africa, and uh, Eurasia 
with very few exceptions, a complicit with the worst of American, Western, and Israeli policy. The mm -hmm. absolute worst. So they literally let these countries get away with murder. The exceptions, of course, are Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, mm -hmm. uh, Assad in Syria, and the Iranian government with its new president, especially Hassan Rouhani, mm -hmm. who have written separate articles about twice. Mm -hmm. These are independent countries, independent countries America doesn't tolerate. After 9-11, I believe it was Richard Armitage who put it to the uh, Pakistani government that America would either shower Pakistan with billions of dollars or with bombs. Mm -hmm. Billions of dollars if America supported U.S. policy, which meant going to war with Afghanistan, which meant supporting it, which meant all of the ways that one country supports another, or if, Afghanistan, if Pakistan objected, then America would go to war with Pakistan and would shower it with bonds. Mm -hmm. Well, the message got through, and uh, it's been that way ever since. Pakistani governments support the worst of American crimes, but it's just as true in the other countries throughout the region, whether it's Jordan, whether it's uh, Morocco, whether it's... Uh, uh, Oh, my goodness. There's Iraq, too many. Yeah. <laughs> Yemen, uh, Bahrain, mm -hmm. Tunisia. But you know, the, the, the countries you said that they are with the exception, I think three of them have already been declared uh, terrorist state, Hamas, Hezbollah, as well as Assad's regime in Syria. So uh, they won't buy your version. And also there is 66.3 billion arms trade, uh, and that is a worth of export. That's the biggest export of America. So why would they want peace in these countries? And they have already allowed 66 countries to purchase drones. So well, they don't want peace. They want war. Because if they had peace, they couldn't sell all these weapons. That I makes sense. Bombers, Absolutely. That wars. makes sense. <laughs> but that's my point. So why, why would anyone like yourself or any activist they are going or they are demonstrating against these drone strikes when they know there is no outcome other than making people aware of this issue. Is well, it individuals demonstrate against the drone strikes, but mm -hmm. America absolutely wants them. America thrives on war. Israel thrives on war. NATO allies thrive on war. The worst thing that could happen to either Israel, NATO, or America is for war, is for peace to break out. That's the absolute worst possibility. So if it does break out, America will go out of its way to facilitate, manipulate, create conflict to have another war. America's policy is permanent war. It's at war perpetually with one or more nations. Direct wars, proxy wars, they're all illegal. You could go back as far as you want. World War II, before World War II, post-World War II, America has always been at war. Uh, okay. And what, what, what is the future? I mean, from a U.S. or CIA point of view, the official status, I mean, can we change it? Can we, is it possible? It's always possible, and we better find a way to change it. Mm -hmm. Because if America doesn't stop fighting wars, you know the old saying, and I believe it, you live by the sword, you perish by it. Every empire in world history has gone the same way. Mm -hmm. It reached, it overfought, it overspent, it died. America is no exception. The Roman Empire lasted hundreds of years. The American Empire has been what? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, okay, if we if we try, let me get in Asim because I think you. Uh, there was a case in London High Court uh, challenging drones, and it was rejected because of uh, the classified documents involving in it. So, I mean, there's no even legal avenues challenging these drone strikes all across the world. So what are the other avenues we can take? I think, uh, say, basically, sometimes, as Stephen is saying as well, sometimes there are no alternatives. People, societies, countries find those alternatives as as you go through that time period. Sometimes, I mean, for instance, when there was no electricity, there was, there you used to use few other things. Then the electricity came, the inventions. It's a similar manner, basically. Uh, and it boils down to that, why do we as activists, why do we actually do these things? And the answer is very simple. 
that the actual concept of a peace and uh, and a society basically which defies all these things which needs to introduce all the, the the peacefulness and the stability it it relies on justice it's the sense of justice and this is what is missing basically from all this americans argument basically to, to have waged the war of terror and and basically there is no justice so so basically as an individual as a human one has to follow the voice of conscience as well that we are actually and, and for that reason you will see uh, activists around the world they don't necessarily have to have the, 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 the some uh, different religions but it's something that unites them and it's the same way and in pakistan basically uh, i think we are tired basically but at the same time every day the consensus does build up that we cannot tolerate this anyway we w we will find alternatives and this best expression basically which is happening and we're witnessing now is that the american imperialism and the american civilization as to speak mm. is on its path of erosion and decline it's that is the ultimate expression that where the nothing the rest will see here say they will not take that on board basically and the commerce and the currency of commerce and the currency of capitalism and the currency of democracy is actually the war for them and mm. this is where their downfall is is uh, already happened so you cannot control these things and they really have to step away from this and they have to think inwards do you, do you, do you realize what is happening in usa in, internally how often we actually hear about the situation that is currently going on usa the education issues the financial issues the total decomposition of everything because of the fact that they're so alienated themselves from the people of America. We've always said it, we have nothing against Americans, but it's the policy, it's the foreign policy. So it's mainly it's the, the foreign US. policy which has of been... Of course, it's, it's the foreign policy is of aggression. Mm -hmm. There is no, there is not a single element of peace in there. There is no dialogue. You, it's, I mean, imagine that they call themselves the superpowers and they call themselves the cradle of civilization and imagine the height of arrogance when they actually go to Pakistan that in the, after 9-11, either you with us or you with against us. Against what us. kind of dialogue is that? Mm -hmm. So mean, you, you, you support the argument that one should have dialogue in civilized society, and I'm sure everyone, everyone does it. But, uh, but my question is that if a U.S. official seems a terrorist, I mean, be it signature strikes, and I want uh, Stephen to answer this, please, uh, or any surgical strikes, they have been notified by FBI and CIA and other that they are these these are the threat to national security. So, what other options they have to eradicate those if they don't go after? Obviously, Obama in the recent speech he has promised once again that there will be fewer uh, drone strikes. So, what is wrong with it? I mean, can we satisfy the other activists with this notion that yes? We will continue uh, to have drone strikes, but they will be fewer in numbers. Uh, I mean, Stephen? I would like to comment on yes, that. Yes, I'll come back to you. Uh, I'll come back to you. Stephen? It's not drones, but it's a very good example. Last Friday, he promised reforming NSA spying. <laughs> we all know about NSA spying. It goes on on a global basis. It goes on in Pakistan, it goes on in America, it goes on everywhere. Obama gave a press conference. He promised reform. What has he done as his first step? He appointed uh, the head of U.S. national intelligence, James Clapper, James Clapper, mm -hmm. who went before Congress and lied and said, America does not have a domestic spying program. Everybody knows America has a domestic spying program. He was forced to admit, well, I really didn't say that quite the way I should have. Okay. He fell on his sword, he admitted it, he lied, but he said it. Clapper will head a so-called independent monitoring group to see that America enforces uh, NSA spying reform. Mm -hmm. It guarantees there'll be no reform whatsoever. The idea that America will continue its drone strikes is absolutely wrong-headed. They won't be curtailed, Saeed. They'll mm -hmm. be increased. They will be increased. And w yes. you have just mentioned NSA, so I want to bring in NSA and their PRISM and X key score as well. Edwin Snowden, we all know about, uh, got asylum 
Obama has canceled his uh, scheduled meeting with uh, President Putin. And obviously this uh, implies the role of UK and Germany especially, that GCHQ was given 100 million uh, US dollars by the Americans to uh, give them the support what they need. So what, uh, what is the solution? How can we come, which Asim is already referring, to dialogue, to build this nation, to build all uh, peace all around the world? What are the solutions? What are, what are possibilities? Well, there is no possibility by going to government and expecting them to do anything, except by mass sustained pressure that can take years, mm -hmm. years, because the big achievements around the world, including in America, didn't happen in months, didn't happen in a year or two. They happened in many, many years, and in some cases, it took decades. Pressure, sustained, people refusing to quit, and finally it gets through. I don't believe in violence. I think violence only get, begets more violence. America would have a legitimate right to come after me if I said, destroy America by force. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that. I believe it should be, I believe it should be changed, but by nonviolent means. I want real democracy. I don't want fake democracy. I want peace. I don't want war. These are things everybody should want Everybody should support, and if they're not willing to put their bodies on the line for it, then they don't deserve it. I'm willing to put my body on the line for it. I do it every single day. Again, I do it in writing. I do it in my, in my, in my media, my media work, mm -hmm. and literally every day of the week, seven days a week, long hours. I know my government knows me, Saeed. Mm -hmm. They know me very, very well. They know where I am. They know what I believe in. They can come and get me anytime. If they think they're going to silence me, they've got another thought coming. The only way they can do it is lock me up or kill me. And I'm old enough to say, I can't say I don't worry about that, mm -hmm. but I'm too old to say I simply won't. I simply You, you simply won't budge. Okay. All right. Asim. A very vocal stance uh, by Stephen. How many people you can find nowadays uh, who have who stand united uh, with the people and who promote democracy, who share the same values and thoughts? I, I, I mean, it's really difficult. <laughs> Actually, if you remove all the government officials, all the intelligence agency, normal human beings, whether they're in Middle East, in Pakistan, and around the world, actually support the sense of justice, peace, and dialogue. Mm -hmm. I mean, to referring to your earlier question, that what if the FBI, FBI, CIA has the intelligence and it makes them basically legitimate to actually go and attack? Well, Colin Powell had given the wrong information. Uh, Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, well, they have weapons of mass destruction. What happened in the end? It was nothing. So I think it's just this multiple uh, dimension approach where you actually do the awareness as well, where you highlight, where you fight in, uh, through writing, through interviews, through protests, through all the non-violent means that in order to actually bring governments, in order to bring an opinion to a different change, that this is not actually... I mean, just imagine... I mean, if Americans are basically uh, getting billions of dollars through the arm trades, I'm sure there is an alternative where they can get more by not having war. I mm. mean, isn't it better for them, uh, for Americans, if one were to be thinking from the Americans' perspective as well and from the people in the government and Obama, that isn't it better for them, for America, to actually have regions and uh, in the world where there is no war rather than you introduce wars? They have, they have literally... Uh, spread themselves so uh, thinly around the world that they, there are bound to be things like that. I mean, there are people always questioning. People are writing about it that in, they wanted to build Afghanistan. I mean, look, this is how they've built Afghanistan. Tony Blair used to say that, well, we will build the infrastructure in Afghanistan. How can you build a country through the means of war? I mean, you, all you leave is a trail of disasters and plunders. I mean, has, haven't they learned lesson from history? Do, do not they realize that what happened to Russia, Soviet Union, do not they realize that it actually the same fate awaits them? American civilization is basically going, well, if, if, if it is to be a civilization, if they're, on the, they're on the downhill. It is fast eroding. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just have to buckle themselves up and they have to start some serious questions that all these writers, all these activists in America who are highlighting this, 
they are actually saying something right. They, 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 the people should be taken, their voices should be heard. If they don't want to hear a Pakistani voice, why don't they hear the voices of people like Stephen and mm -hmm. all the others, people mm -hmm. like Chomsky's and all the others who have been fighting for the, through the, for the right, for the justice and for the sense of uh, harmony. I mean, they, but obviously they're not interested. So obviously then you realize, okay, it's an agenda of those particular minds and the subsets where they actually want to pursue it relentlessly. America have pursued relentlessly these means of war in every single decade. In mm. every single decade, there's the same patterns have emerged and they still haven't learned. So I think it's about time people, and it will come, people do realize uh, you, America cannot sustain this war. I mean, look at the space program. The Chinese have already launched their space program as well. By year 2020, the people, the astronauts are learning Chinese. So their space program is already gone. So, and their military might, they cannot sustain that. They simply cannot sustain that. No country in the past and no country in the future can go like that. It's just simply undoable. So, oh. but... They will learn. Okay. Well, uh, Stephen, let's try to uh, wrap what we have discussed. We have discussed the uh, background of these drone strikes. We have also highlighted American imperialism uh, and its future. But I want to ask you a more uh, US-specific uh, question here. Drone strikes now, let me not use this strike word, drone surveillance in states, there's been reported cases that you can buy drones for 300 US dollars. And does not it violate the Fourth Amendment of U.S. citizens? Oh, absolutely, it violates the Fourth Amendment. So why so, why no one goes uh, to the any court procedure? I know there are 30 states who have already rest restricted areas where you can operate drones, but there are no restrictions all across the world where you can operate and where you can't. Well, I defy any state to uh, impose restrictions against Washington. If Washington wants to overfly a certain area, mm -hmm. Washington will do what it wants. And of course, drones are only one instrument of surveillance or belligerence or any way possible. Uh, pol state and local police departments in America are militarized. They get combat weapons to go after their own people. So you can, you can attack people from the air, you can attack people from the ground, you can attack them in multiple ways. And federal, state, and local authorities in America, foreign governments are complicit with the worst of U.S. policies. And the people who are harmed most are the innocent ones who should be protected. But they're the ones that are harmed. And the so-called bad guys are very, very small in numbers. Studies have been done. I've quoted a study in America done by New York University and Stanford University that says only 2% of the people killed by U.S. drones are called high-value right. targets, 2%. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. And mainly they are civilians. But my question was that how, how many people you know in the United States who have challenged the, these drone surveillance in the United States? I mean, there are reports even environment protection agencies have drones for surveillance and drugs informants agencies as well. It's the biggest problem I know, dismissiveness. Mm. Americans are dismissive. Even people who know a little bit, everybody knows about law, lawless NSA spying. Everybody knows about it. I don't see any protests in the street. I don't see angry people. I don't walk around my building and hear people saying, what are we going to do about this? People say, well, you know, I don't see any harm come to myself. Mm -hmm. I, I need to do this. I need to worry about that. I want to see this movie. I want to go shopping. Mm -hmm. They want all the wrong things and the things that touch their lives and harm them and their families. They're dismissive enough. And I could put it this way because of their attitude, they let America get away with murder. With murder. Okay. Last questions to both of you. Asim, you, a technology consultant yourself, what is the future of drones? 66 countries to buy drones, countries like India has recently violated uh, Pakistani airspace for some uh, seconds with the drone. Uh, yeah. I Israel has also used drone over Egypt and killed some six militants, in the, according to reports. So everyone is buying these new uh, drones, I would say. So where are we heading? I think it's basically, it goes back to the same thing. It's we, we're heading towards those 
uh, the times where uh, you will wage wars, uh, invisible uh, enemy, basically, and it's, it's a great market for drones. Uh, and for all these countries who are actually lining up to buy them, all these countries have obviously have certain things to hide from, and they, it, they just want to follow the same model with the Israel and the Americans and the rest of the world, uh, the rest of the West actually wants to follow. But the thing is this, that it's just it's the amount, I mean, and there will come a time when the Americans will also be pushing uh, the technology to how to uh, sort of bring the drone down. So they will be working on both alternatives as well. So mm -hmm. it's just, I think it's people have to, the governments of the world, people in the in the East, people in the West, the governments, the intellectuals, the writers, uh, the academia and the activists, they all have to open their eyes up basically that this is not what the world should look like. This is not what the Americans should be doing. I mean, why can't they invest their intellectual expertise and for something to actually reduce hunger, to bring an end to TB, uh, to bring an end to famine? Why don't we, why these governments are not doing these measures? Rather than actually why they have left it to the organizations, to the charity organizations, instead of actually focusing on killing people, and mm -hmm. for interests like oil and these things, they really have to change their narrative. They need to change their direction. And until they change their direction, as Stephen was saying earlier on as well, that the Americans are generally very dismissive because it doesn't affect them, so they don't bother. But they will come. But do they the will come a time? They, but does the natural do the natural disasters actually do affect them? And they do bother. Mm -hmm. So it, isn't it uh, is something to learn from the experience that there will come a time the earthquakes will come as well. The, all the other sort of uh, natural disasters will take place. They, there may be countries and islands that may be totally wiped off. So isn't it better to actually follow something which is more constructive and beneficial for the whole humanity rather than serving the interests of like one or two percent of people in the whole world basically for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. I think it's a wake up call, but we will actually keep highlighting the stance and as a Pakistani, as a, as a PTI person as well, that in Pakistan, we simply cannot tolerate these kind of things. And we will constantly raise voices at all international forums and uh, our friends like Stephen and the Media Benchmen and all the other organizations, we are with them, they are with us. And inshallah, the time will come that we will see a different approach. We will see a different end. Okay. So the end. So, okay, Stephen, but, your last one minute, please. Uh, 3,500 to 4,000 4, um, people died of these drone strikes over the last seven, eight years. In 2004, there was only one drone strike, and over uh, these eight, nine years, we have seen so many. What is the future? Well, first of all, Saeed, I think the number of people killed is probably much, much greater than the official numbers, because the official numbers are always understated. Mm -hmm. What do we do about it? You have to believe in the impossible. Mm -hmm. I believe in the impossible every day. I believe in hope. I believe the worst thing I or anybody could do is to lose hope, because if you lose hope, you lose everything. The great struggles are won because believe, people believe in achieving the impossible, and when they, and when they believe it long enough, and seriously enough, things happen that never would happen any other way. I will go to my grave believing in this and taking it with me. And I do believe, Saeed, that because of whatever I do, small and simple as it is, maybe it'll affect other people. Maybe they'll pick up the baton while I'm still here, after I'm gone, and they'll carry on. And maybe they one day will achieve what I was never able to do, but maybe I will have laid a few important bricks and I'm dedicated to doing it. I can't imagine doing anything less important than that. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen. We wish you uh, very well for your future endeavors, as well as Asim. Thank you very much for joining us. And viewers, we have talked about drones, its background, as well as uh, what is happening now and what future holds. Uh, 89 billion US dollars over the next decade. And this is the uh, industry estimate that this is a um, market which will, and US will be benefiting from it as there are 66.